last week for our Sunday Gospel, we finished reading chapter 6 of John. This was an inflection point in the life of Jesus because a large group of disciples decided not to follow him because his doctrine was hard to accept. And a smaller group led by Peter had the resolution of following Jesus despite the harshness of his doctrine. In today's gospel, Jesus finds himself discussing with the Pharisees as he normally does. And the discussion has to do with cleaning your hands before being able to eat. So in today's homily, let us face this discussion and let us try to understand what Jesus is proposing and how this can have practical consequences in our life. There's a very different approach to the law in the first reading and in the mind of the Pharisees that you can see in the gospel. In the first reading from the book of Exodus, we can see that for Moses, the law was the pathway to the promised land. The law was the guarantee that if you kept it, this would lead you into the promised land. In fact, for the Jews, in, the, in that original conception of the law, this is truly beautiful. If you kept the commandments of God, that led you into the freedom of the promised land, even if you were in Egypt or even if you were in the desert. So in the book of Exodus, we can see that law and freedom need each other. Law and freedom complement each other and mutually require each other. In the gospel, the Pharisees have a very different understanding of the law. For them, the law is something that you keep so that you can be just before the Lord. So in a way, the Pharisees have the idea that they become just in keeping all of the commandments. So the law is not related with freedom, but the law is related with self-justification. I am just before the Lord because I have the capacity to keep all of the commandments. How can we relate this with our lives? And I think the application is very straightforward. Let us ask ourselves this question. When you keep the commandments of the church, do you do it because you find freedom in the commandments of the law of the church? Or do you do it because you want to be just before the Lord? Because you want to be sure that you are just in your own works before the Lord? Let me ask you this question. Do you come to Mass because you find freedom in Mass, because you find in Mass an anticipation of a promised land? Or do you come to Mass because you're required to come to Mass and you can feel just in coming to Mass? Let me ask you this difficult question. If Mass wasn't a requirement, if not coming to Mass wasn't a mortal sin, would we still come to Mass? Or do we come to Mass because we want to feel just before the Lord? So I think that in today's readings, there is a beautiful reminder for you and for me. All of the commandments of the church, everything that the Lord requires for us to do, is meant to move us to a place of freedom and not to a place of self-justice before Christ. Now let us move to the second point. Jesus remembers words from the prophet Isaiah, very beautiful words. He says, this people honor me with their lips, 
but their hearts are far away from me. Jesus is, is quoting the prophet Isaiah, speaking of the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees say to honor the Lord in keeping these new commandments, but their hearts are away from the Lord. But this word struck me very easily applicable to us because I think that sometimes we too can honor the Lord with our lips, but our hearts can be far away from the Lord. And what am I thinking of? I'm thinking of the Mass. Brothers and sisters, let us be honest, honest with each other. How many times in the Mass our lips honor the Lord, but our hearts in a, are in a completely different place? How many times in Mass we pray the glory together or we sing the glory together and our hearts are in our grocery list after Mass. How many times in Mass we can recite the creed by heart and our lips are moving and we're, and we're saying the creed, but our hearts are looking for what we're going to do after Mass or throughout the week? Aren't you amazed by your capacity to repeat words with our lips, but our hearts being in a completely different place. Many times as a priest, and I feel ashamed of this, I can be saying the Mass, praying the Mass, but I find my mind going to a different place. But this is my encouragement for all of us. Isn't it beautiful when we come to Mass and our lips and our heart are in the same place? Isn't it beautiful when we truly engage in Mass and when we sing the glory with our lips, our hearts are truly saying the words of the glory? Isn't it beautiful when we come to Mass and when we sing the Sanctus, the Holy, 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 our, it's not only our, moves, our lips that are moving, but also our heart in accordance with our lips? How can we do this? There is no easy solution but I want to offer one insight that I think can help. Coming early to Mass helps. I think that if we were Catholics that arrived five minutes before Mass, if we had the habit of coming five minutes before Mass, kneeling before Mass, I think that makes it so much more likely for our lips and our hearts to be together throughout the Mass. And I say this because I see it in my own life as a priest. I know that when I am recollect before Mass, my lips and my heart are in the same place. But I see so many times that when I rush into Mass, it's much more likely for my lips to be in one place and my heart to be in another. So I challenge you, why don't we try all of us today in this Mass to have our lips and our hearts in accordance with each other. That everything that we pronounce with our lips, our hearts are in harmony with what our lips say. Last point, with this I finish. I also find it amazing, one of Jesus' statements today, he says, we are not defiled but what, but what comes from without, but we are defiled but what comes from within. So there is something within us that is, in a sense, rotten from where all bad things come. What is this principle that comes from within that is the source of all our perverse tendencies? And these are the consequences of original sin. So I think that today is a good occasion for us to be realistic about how we carry the consequences of original sin. And also, our kids carry with the consequences of original sin. Because there is a philosopher called Jean-Jacques Rousseau who thought that kids were immaculate. And it was society who perverted kids. So he thought that originally, human beings were perfect 
And it was society that perver perverted human beings. But a biblical view of human beings remind us that from the conception, there is something within us perverted and that moves us towards sin. And this is a great reminder that kids need to be educated because there are perverse tendencies within them. And the best definition of education that I have heard is this one. Education is fostering the good and repressing the bad. Fostering the good and repressing the bad. But I think that this reminder of us being born with perverse tendencies is also a great reminder for all parents here that they must take very seriously their duty to evangelize their kids. That one of the main responsibilities of parents is the responsibility of educating their kids. And I heard a really insightful phrase a couple of days ago. The phrase said, if you do not indoctrinate your kids, someone else will. It is true that the term that we use is not indoctrination, we call evangelization. But today is a good reminder that because our kids are born with perverse tendencies, we must educate them and we must take very seriously our duty to evangelize them and to share with them the doctrine of Christ. So brothers and sisters, what did I want to share with you today? Number one, let us remember, we must find in the commandments of the church not a place to find justice before God. It is not we that find justice before God because we keep the law. But we must be sure that in the commandments of the law, we find freedom. When we come to Mass, we find freedom and an anticipation of the promised land. We must also remember, we have to avoid the prophecy of Isaiah. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart are far away from me. Every time that we come to Mass, let us come five minutes early so that we're sure that our lips and our heart are in the same place. And finally, remember that today Jesus is saying, all that defile us does not come from without, but from, from within. Parents, please remember, our kids suffer the consequences of original sin. This is an injunction a reminder that we must educate them and that evangelizing them is a first-class priority for parents.